Welcome to Everyday Motherhood, the podcast that inspires you to pause, connect, and play more every single day. The podcast that's focused on you, the mom, to help you fill up your cup and rediscover the joy and love in your everyday life. We can't parent alone, and parenting is too serious to be serious all the time. Thanks for being here. My name is Christy Thomas. I'm the founder and developer of KeepCalmMotherOn.com. Now let's talk about audiobooks, fiction audiobooks this week. Last week's episode, we talked about my favorite nonfiction books, but this week we're going to talk about fiction books. And I'm going to answer a couple questions you sent in. So let's answer those first. When I'm listening to a nonfiction audiobook, I usually have the notes app open on my iPhone. And in that notes app, I've titled the document so I know what book those notes are about. And I randomly pause the book and put notes into the notes app so I can remember what I want to remember. I tried using like the bookmark feature and taking notes in audiobooks before and I never went back and referenced them. So I found if I use the notes app, then I can go back and reference them and actually handwrite them into a journal that I keep later on. The next question that was sent in was how do I listen to books or when do I find the time? So I find the time basically um, when I'm exercising, when I'm driving, when I'm folding laundry, when I'm doing dishes, when I'm making dinner, there are all sorts of times that I just put my headphones around my neck and um, I like to wear these big bulky headphones. I'll put a link to the show notes. They're kind of like Beats, but not quite. They're like so much cheaper. And then I can hear the kids around me and I can also um, listen to an audiobook or a podcast. Sometimes I do do the one AirPod thing in my ears, but mostly I just wear my big bulky Bluetooth headphones. Now let's talk about fiction books. I really like a fiction book that I can slide into that will leave me happy and feeling refreshed afterwards. I don't read fiction books to stress myself out. You should know that. I can't watch NCIS. I can't watch... Game of Thrones, there are so many things that I don't have the temperament for. My stomach turns and then I'm awake all night. So I have to really protect what goes in. So all my fiction books are really light hearted. I recommend fiction books by Sophia Kinsella. She wrote all the shopaholic books. And yes, I know they're not like brand new, but they're comforting to me. So I really like listening to anything by Sophia Kinsella. The other author that I really, really enjoy is Catherine Center. And there are two books I like by her. I love all the books she has in this like set called Things You Save in a Fire. Excellent series there. And then the other book that made me want to read her first was The Lost Husband. And if you like goats and goat farms, jump in. The third fiction book I want to recommend, and you may have read it, it went viral a couple years ago, was The Rosie Project. And I like all the Rosie Project books by Graham Simpson. Um, It's about a man who is autistic or has autism and his quest in life to find find a mate. And then it goes from there. They They have many sequels about their relationship together. He is an Australian author, which is super fun. Um, Just like the next author, I like learning words that I don't find familiar to me and hearing them in a narration, having it read aloud just adds joy to me to hear words that I would say wrong or I wouldn't be able to pick up the nuances of. Like here in the United States, we call baking soda, right? Baking soda. But when I've read books from England or Australia, they call it bicarbonate soda. And that just cracks me up. So the next author, also an Australian author, is Lane Moriarty. And she has many books that have now been made into like 
HBO specials like Big Little Liars. And I think there's another one on the way. All of her books are great. The one that I couldn't put down was What Alice Forgot. That was my first book by her and it haunted me and it made me reflect about my life in the best possible way because it it was a book that reminded me of what's actually important. And that's why I want to read fiction. I want to read fiction to to explore someone else's life and to get a different perspective on the world, but also not have nightmares. That was four. Lane Moriarty was four. The fifth author I want to recommend is um, actually a group of authors, right? If you go on Audible or go on Amazon and start looking up audiobooks or in your library website, you will notice that there are all sorts of Hollywood actors and actresses that are doing audiobooks, which is fantastic because they are professional readers. (laughs) So they give a lot of passion to a book. So if you have a classic that you would like to try, find it with a Hollywood star doing it. Rachel McAdams did an amazing version of Anne of Green Gables. Hands down, fantastic. If you find a classic that you really, really wanna read with a Hollywood star, like Scarlett Johansson did Alice in Wonderland. Also, another great retelling because their voice is so dynamic. They have practiced thousands of hours honing their craft. The last book I wanna recommend for just a get lost at the pool, escape your life, is by Laura Weisberger. And I recommend any of the Devil Wears Prada books. I think there's three of them right now. I just like to escape, guys, in my fiction books. So you will not find anything life-changing in these books, probably. They'll make you laugh and they'll make you feel not so alone, especially in motherhood. Before I tell you the self-care and play idea for this week, I really want you to go consider signing up for the next 84 Hug Challenge that starts on Monday, July 13th. So don't miss out. Sign up now. The challenge is completely free. And I know that you'll feel better after you hug your kid 12 times a day for seven days in a row, getting in 84 hugs. The link to sign up is in the show notes go find it. Now here is your self-care tip for today. It's been a while since I suggested this and I want you to put on a face mask. Maybe you need to make it at home with oatmeal or strawberries or banana and honey or you can go get one of those fancy paper masks like I like to wear from the grocery store but put on a face mask and really take care of yourself. This summer weather can really do havoc to your skin. So I know that self-care is often considered cliche when it's bathtubs and manicures, but a face mask really makes me slow down. There's not a lot of practical things you can do while wearing a face mask. Now for the play idea for this week. I want you to get out a balloon and just play balloon bop. Maybe make an obstacle course around the house where you have to move that balloon like under the table, over a chair. Maybe you have to do it with blowing a straw. Whatever it is, see what happens when you just get out balloons and make an obstacle course in your house for them. Your kids have better ideas than I do. So embrace them, lean in. You are the right mom for your kids and your kids are the right kids for you. I hope that you have fun, laugh, smile, make the memories, not because I tell you to, but because it's revolutionary to enjoy motherhood in all of the mess and all the glory. Don't miss out. I'll see you on Monday, June 29th for the very first kitchen table service project. Every month, I'm going to do one episode to prompt you into giving more with your kids, leaning into activism and teaching your family values through fun. I'll see you there. Bye.